into the ring. Step into the ring! Testing, testing, one, two, is this thing on? Anybody, anybody out there? Terribly sorry for the inconvenience, everybody.
every other day. Hello everybody, I am the Blood Tyrant. I will be your host today. For the Gummy Snake Showdown, sponsored by League Trolley. Apologies for the lateness, but I'm coming to you now with Losers Round 7, wherein fellows by the name of Bunny and Sora J will be duking it out for a spot in Round 8. It seems that Bunny has already selected their character. Eager to get into things, I see. Also, my mic is on, correct? That thing is always turning itself off. Seems to be working. My apologies, despite being in this business for four long years, I still... I still may come off as an amateur. And greetings, slu- uh, hey slushy, welcome back to the- Welcome back. Long time no see, old friend. How am I doing? Eh, being perfectly honest, less than ideal. I've been dealing with quite a bit of crap. But that is besides the point, because you're not here to listen to my sob story. You're here for epic battles, as well as potentially scout, as well as to, as well as to see who will who will likely be your opponent ahead of time. Anyway, this is best of five, if anyone's curious. And it seems Sora J has selected Daisy as their character. I probably said so earlier, but Bunne has selected Ness. This is one fight I certainly can't make a call on out the gate, however. Sora J may certainly have the tier pick, but it's no secret that Ness is that Ness's greatest strengths are only amplified online. Thanks to Nintendo Thanks to Nintendo's continued insistence that this version of that this version of the netcode is far superior. Why do they insist this? I doubt we'll ever know. But they believe this is how the game is meant to be played, so little else to be done about it. As Sora J successfully lands a four hit up air combo. Or no. Three up airs followed by their upbeat. Swiftly depriving Bunny of their first stop. And reminding me to activate the replay buffer. Aww. Oh, that was mean. So mean. As they tried to air dodge for the stage. The PK Thunder intersected with them, resulting in the air dodge coming out too late. 
Ah, uh, I hate it when that happens too. Right as you air dodge, something strikes you. And for some reason, you still air dodge afterwards. I believe that's worthy of this. Sora J, Sora J, following a bit of a, and there goes Bunez's second stock. Not entirely sure what happened there. I can only assume they were hanging onto that ledge a little too long. But I'd say that's effective revenge for earlier, especially as Bunna pulls off a quite a string of their own. Despite all, oh. well, a self-destruct for a self-destruct. <laughs> Round one goes to Sora J. Now we wait for the stage and the characters to be selected for round two. As I take a moment to wonder if I forgot anything. Also, Frost Drake, welcome to Taipan GG's. How are you this fine evening? Ready? Hmm. Round two quickly begins. Ouch. All I'm gonna say there. Mighty big ouch. More ouch. And if... Oh, that's... Alas, Bunna must say... must bid farewell to their first stock, and not even because of their opponent. Their recovery simply failed them. Hardcore failed them. They are able to recover, and are able to mix up Sora J out of their shield for a quick back air. I'd say that quickly and easily ties things up. But Sora, but as far as the flow of this battle is concerned, Sora J continues to hang on to it, if only by a thread. At this point, it's pretty clear they're both just struggling to tell where the other's going to end up. It's something I myself often have issues with. I really need to pick a new main. Well, this seems familiar. Sora J attempted to use the turn up in an attempt to force. Never mind. So goes Bunna's second stop. Yeah. 
You're alright, but someone's salty about your O2 in the main tourney. Ah, no worries, my friend. I know your pain. I had a mighty embarrassing loss during a local beat. Ouch! Double ouch! <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Well, first of all, round two... Goes to Sorge, A. Eh? And second of all, allow me to go over here. No oh, blasted thing. Where are you? Here it is. All right, let's play that back. <sighs> following a bit of a following a bit of awkward recoveries. Sora J uses their own body to block Bunna's recovery, force, thus causing the PK Thunder Bullet, thus causing the P, well, causing the PK Thunder Bullet to only travel a short distance, as is typical for Ness's up B. <laughs> they may have been flung clear across the screen, but man. Well, I guess that's one tactic when you're stock ahead. Ready? It's also a tactic I've tried myself to very little avail. I'm not sure why. I think I'm bad with distances. Nevertheless, let the battle continue. One, go! Or rather, let round three begin. Ouch. And just like that, Sora J has deprived Bunna of their set first stock before they themselves are anywhere near kill percent. They get their revenge, I'll say that much. But will it be enough? Nice little string right there. But, ultimately... Will that be... Will that be enough to deprive Sora J of their second stop? No it will not, they successfully recover and are even able to force Bunna into disadvantage. Oof! Anyone else feel that? So goes Bunna's second stock. That, I'd say that firmly puts Sword J in the lead. Also, how'd they survive that? I thought that was a guaranteed kill at nine. Well, my, well, Well, my slowed down brain matters not, for they land the next back throw, this one a little bit closer to the corresponding blast line. Depriving Sora J of their second stock, and even getting in quite the combo, quickly taking them to 79.9, to along with a quick aerial, getting in... taking them to 102. Something tells me Sora J might want to keep their distance. Or something like that might happen! Wow, right as I say it, eh? And just like that, round three goes to Bunny.
Also greetings, Captain Z Pet Z. Welcome to Taipan GG's. You're just in time for the for the Gummy Snake Showdown, sponsored by Big Trolley. As we move into round four, or not. Wow, way to completely Wow, way to completely derail me there. Let's try- And so, round four begins. Does anyone in the chat have any particular predictions as to who will be take- Who will be taking the spot in the next- In the next round? Bunnet tries to go for an old-fashioned di- Nest down tilt combo, but winds up thrown off thanks to- the odd disjoint in Daisy's down smash. Hey, that alliterates. Also, it looks like it's... Also, it only now occurs to me, it's Saturday, between 8 and 11.59. Which means the Animal Crossing stages will be in KK Slider mode. It's always only until then that I often realize it's Saturday. I live a long, hard life. Nevertheless, Bunnett was able to turn things around a bit, but they wind up victim of a down tilt to forward air. <laughs> wow. Sora Jay's attempt at this turnip snipe fails spectacularly as Bunnett grabs it out of the air. However, Bunnett seems to be going for some rather hard punishes. But I suppose it worked. Ouch. Oh. That being said, however, Sora J gets their revenge via the via the same trick they tried earlier, only this time using a turnip. Don't know why it worked that time when it didn't last time. I guess it was a simple matter of distance. You know me. And and seemingly shaken by that, Bunnett winds up deprived of their second stock in record time. They try their best to use PK Thunder in an attempt to force Sora J off stage, to no avail. Something tells me they should avoid going for PK Pulse right there. It's very clearly not working. That move may be powerful, but it's very punishable. Heck, you can punish it with Inkling Roller, and that's saying something. Nevertheless, a couple of following Sora J going into disadvantage. Bunnet is able to take out their second stock with a couple of forward aerials. Ah. Uh... And so, the brown con- And just like that, the battle concludes. The winner! 3 to 1! Sora J! Alas, GG's my friends. Congratulations, Sora J. Looks like you will be moving on to the next round. And apologies, Bunny, but it looks like this is the end of the line for you. You fought valiantly, however. You won't be forgotten. As we move on... ...to Losers Round 8. Where Sora J will be going against a fellow by the name of F.B. King. Wonder who they'll be playing as. We'll find out soon enough. Or not.
you know, once my browser unfreezes. So, as we wait, as we wait, let me ask, how is everyone doing today? Greetings, Blue JM, and welcome in. Yo, thanks for hosting, fam. Had a blast. Was wondering if I all. Uh, I do technically. Though, if I'm being perfectly honest, Sable Detect does not quite work as desired anymore. Whether that's on Nintendo's part or mine is difficult to tell. I mean, it, I mean, I'm able to get, I mean, I'm able to measure for input lag, and flags and stuff like, and late packages and stuff like that, but for some reason the flags go nuts. I don't know why. <sighs> Nevertheless, I suppose I can take a moment to activate it. Let's just, let's just see. As we wait for NB. <sighs> Hang on. Greetings, Emperor Evie. How are you this fine evening? Oh good, that's good to hear. Hmm. So oh, unusual. It would seem FB King is a no-show. Thus, it looks like we'll be moving on to the loser's quarterfinal. <laughs> We're in Sword A. We'll be going against a fellow by the name of Meliodas. Hmm, I believe I know someone like that, with a name similar to that. Could just be my head, though. <sighs> no idea. Like I said, I tend to be very brain dead.
Also, greetings, no name. Welcome in. How are you this fine evening? Can we undq FB King? I am afraid that is outside of my. I am afraid that is something outside of my power. You will, uh. It is something he will have to take up with the administrator. Sam, are you there? I'll find someone who can do this. <sighs> oh wait. He told me. No, we cannot. Ready? I- My apologies, my friends, but... We cannot. So, let the loser's quarterfinal begin. And I see Meliodas has selected Palutena as their character. Is that both six or all? Is that alternate cos alternate cosmetic six or alternate cosmetic eight? I'm never sure. I think it's eight. Out the gate, Meliodas gets in a size. Quite the read. Two good reads. Very nearly taking out Sora's J's first stock within the first 30 seconds. Sora J only barely hanging on by a thread and returning to the stage. Are they getting their own nice string? Alas, it's cut a little short thanks to just managing to tech off one of the semi solids. And people wonder why I hate semi solids. To me. I need a new main. Does anyone know who the top tiers are right now? Ouch. With one final up tilt, Sora J is deprived of their first stop. Meliodas might want to keep their distance for a time. Otherwise, their own first stop won't be that far behind. Case in point. Wasn't a kill. Wasn't quite the kill, though. a particularly long string of very little happening. <sighs> yeah, that's what I'm calling it. Sora J is finally able to deprive Meliodas of their first stock via a dash attack. Sora might want to take it easy on the approaches for a bit of time, however. Especially since they're getting pretty close to kill percent. Well read on the spot dodge, I'll say that much. Oof. Well read on the up smash, I'll say that much. Very nearly depriving Sora J of their second stock. Alas, they once again hang on by a thread. 
and again, following a neutral air to up tilt. A combo I previously hadn't seen before. Oh, pfft. Alas, Sora J was betrayed by their own turnip. It causing that back air to last long enough to hit. They get their revenge right there, likely by their forward air, depriving Meliodas of their second stop. Meliodas still hit, still seems to be holding on to the flow of the battle, if only by a bit. Sora J seems to be taking it though. Will Sora J be able to turn this around at the last second? Seems like. Wait, that was a stitch face! It's a stitch face! Ah! Alas, the almighty powers of RNG do Meliodas in at the last second. Beware the stitch face, my friends. And so, round one goes to Sora J. Also, Sog Monkey, if you see. Also, Sog Monkey, if you're still there, Sable Detect is online. So. I don't know. Anyway, we move on to round two. I will say, this is certainly going to be quite an interesting string of matches. Especially as Meliodas swaps out Palutena for Rob. Three, two, one, go! <laughs> I'm sure we all know Rob's strengths. That blasted neutral aerial, his powerful back air, his laser, his top. And let's not forget this is online. It's no secret that Rob's greatest strengths come out online. <sighs> that top and the laser may be avoidable to, to the keen- to those of keenest of eye, but as far as I can tell, a fast-falling neutral air from him is nigh impenetrable. Something Meliodas seems to know all too well. Despite their damage being far higher, it's pretty clear Sora J is still in a bit of trouble, having... Quite a bit of trouble reading their movements, and even being the first to lose a stock. Alas, they did not beware of the top. They're able to get their revenge thanks to a quick back air. Which thoroughly ties things up. <sighs> Sora J is able to control the battle's flow for a little bit, also... Was that another Stitch Face? That did a lot of shield damage. Uh. Well. Sorry, what was the issue? Well, if you'll notice. Well, if you'll notice. For some reason, the flags are through the roof, despite that not very clearly not actually being the case, and it, and it's perceiving the game as over, despite it very clearly not being. I assume it is some manner of hardware issue on my end, or Nintendo changed their, or Nintendo in their efforts to make sure no one know that oh, there is only one way to play the game, per their, per their business model made some changes to make it even harder to read. Also, a, also thanks to that quick neutral air, Meliodas has been deprived of their second stock. Sora J is still quite behind.
What? What? I'm sorry, huh? If you'll permit me a moment, I'd like to go to the instant replay. It looks like following using Toad to counter the side B, the side B reflected Toad's spores? How oh, very unusual. <sighs> well, 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 low tier gaming! Welcome, welcome, one and all! And thank you all so much for the raid, my friends. Welcome to Taipan GG's, an international esports organization with hands in Smash Bros. Rocket. Is that a Mr. Saturn? Fortune smiles upon Sora J on this day. What was I saying? Oh yeah. Welcome to Taipan GG's, an international esports organization with hands in Smash Bros, Rocket League, Valorant, and quite a few other games as well. We host weekly ter we host weekly tournaments with cash prizes, courtesy of our sponsor, League Trolley. And you're here t just in time tonight for a particularly special event event involving them. Gummy Snake Showdown with a fifteen hundred dollar prize pool. So, low to your gaming, how was your stream? And apologies for not noticing earlier, I was preoccupied announcing. Also, there goes Sora J's first stock. Also, if you do not recognize me, it is I. I am the Blood Tyrant. I don't know if you remember me or not, but I'm pretty sure I remember you. Sorge tries to go for an old-fashioned gimp right there. Alas, Rob's recovery is one that is not easily gimpable. Excellent side B. And one but another dash attack thoroughly deprives Meliodas of their second stock. Yes, that's what I said. The issue isn't really getting it running. <sighs> the issue is that for some reason, it's reading an excessive amount of flags, despite the gameplay being rather unaffected. As you will see. <sighs> yes, I am uncertain as to why this is. Also, there goes Sora J's second stock. My leading theory is that Nintendo made changes to how the game works in order to make in, an attempt to make it unreadable, as that as that is their belief. A quick three-hit combo right there sends Meliodas into a disadvantaged state, and they're forced to go high with their up B to recover. Another up, another forward air, very. Puts them back in disadvantage, however. As does that back throw. It's pretty clear that throw it's pretty clear that throws in forward airs aren't going to be enough to take out Meliodas. Their offstage movement being too unpredictable. So RJ's only option? A killing blow a blow with strong enough to kill. Which they get in with one final forward air at above 170%. Despite Rather surprisingly heavy. Oh yes, the oh yes, the switch is wired. Believe me, I've run every diagnostic I could.
I must say, this fight is getting to be quite... high octane. They're both one solid killing blow away. Who will land it first? Oh, Meliodas flubs a, pu flubs a punish right there. Oh, but they follow Sorge into the air for one final up air, allowing them to deprive Sorge them of their final stock. Yeah, I already tried that. <sighs> their support team is practically non-existent. Also, there goes Meliodas's. Also, round three goes to Meliodas. And we move on to round four. They die? I don't know, but when I went into the Discord server, it was barren as all heck. Anyway. J tries to return the favor from last round by following Meliodas into the air for a, for a kill off the upper blast line. Alas, to no avail. That being said, Sora J is proving quite good at keeping Meliodas in disadvantage. But Meliodas remains determined to return the favor. And Meliodas continues to be quite the slippery slug off stage. Proving once again Sora's only option is just is just what they did. A killing blow from on stage. And it's looking like Meliodas might be might be left with similar options. Or maybe not. It's a little hard to tell. That might have that down there may have been a two frame, but I'll ask a sour spot one. <laughs> Never mind. Meliodas knows what they're doing off stage. A distinct advantage they which gives them which is giving them quite the distinct advantage over Sora J. They're going to, have to pick up the pace if they want to win this. They s and pick up the pace is certainly something they seem to be doing. But Meliodas is picking is picking up on their offstage play in turn. Frankly, it's a little. Frankly, it's legitimately an 
annoying to watch. Not that though, that was just... Well, I'm not sure what that was. A combination of luck, stupidity, and, well, and the ability to read well. Meliodas just managing to predict Sora J. Sora J would attempt to dash attack the top away, which would leave them stuck in place long enough to go for a back air. They return. Sora J returns the favor with their own back air, but is it too little too late at this point? Given their. Well, I get proven wrong almost instantly as they get in a solid 5 hit combo right there. And, th and 4 consecutive turnip blows. Taking Meliodas to 111.2%. But will it be enough? Especially with Meliodas very much wanting that back air blow. And I see a stitch face! I see a stitch face! Beware the stitch, and there goes the stitch face. Alas, stitch face, hardly knew ye. Pretty clear Sora J won't be letting Meliodas skip get one of their offstage plays anytime soon. Will this fight go to the fifth round, or does Meliodas have this locked in? It's getting harder in the okay, gate, never mind. <laughs> round four goes to Sora J. Looks like we'll be moving on to round 5. Whoever takes this, takes a spot. In the loser's semi-final. Sorry. Ready? Three, two, one, go! Meliodas tries to read for the old fashioned up smash right there, to very little avail. And Sora J tries to read for the counter, for the same amount of avail. Yeah, I said that, I'm sticking with it. And one final up air deprives Sora J of their first stop. I don't know, folks. Out the gate, things are not looking particularly good for Sora J. And that top is certainly not doing him any favors this time. And just like that, I dare say Meliodas might have this locked in. Even if that... Even if, there goes their second stock. Okay then.
Zorge is able to return the favor by sending me by comboing Meliodas to the upper blast line and dealing dealing them in with one final up B. Meliodas doesn't seem to be taking too kindly to it though. But they still seem But they still seem to be particularly keen on keeping their distance for now. Not sure what the plan with that side B was. <laughs> Lucky read on the counter, but not enough to kill. Round 5 goes to Sora J. And they move on. Hmm, not unusual. I gotta reboot it. <laughs> Thus, congratulations, Sora J. Looks like you will be moving on. broken web page. Looks like you will be moving on to the winner's semi-final. <laughs> Emiliodas, my apologies, but it looks like your journey ends here. You fought valiantly, I'll say that much. But the time has come for the loser's semi-final, where Sora J will be going against a fellow by the name of Morris. I can assume this is Morris. Yes? Thank you. 
Alright, yes, that is Morris. Now, we wait. Hopefully not for very long, for the characters have already been selected. Seems Sora J will be sticking with Daisy. And Morris will be going with Ike. <laughs> Let round one begin. Three, two, one, go! Starting off with town and city, eh? Man, I hate this place. Sora J is quick to take the initiative, getting in a good 55% with a turn of related string. Morris, meanwhile, retaliates with a down throw to up air. And a bit of damage thanks to a ledge get up attack. Seems like oh, seems like Morris is trying their best to get in a f to get in a falling aerial of some kind. Which I suppose makes sense, that is how most of Ike's combos start out. Sora J, meanwhile, is attempting to intercept them with their up... with their up air. Nevertheless, Sora J very nearly bites it right there, only not doing so thanks to the freakish... And there goes Sora J's first stock. I was going to say the freakish... the freakishly high blast line on this stage. And there goes Sora J's second stock. Sorry, I'm, uh, if I seem a little unfocused. Morris is just going for aerial combo after aerial combo. And while somewhat boring to watch, one cannot deny it's working. And one final eruption. Send Sora J into the stratosphere. No sympathy from me. Thus, round one goes to Morris. A full blown three stop. If that's a thing. And I thought Sora J would have to get the let out last round. They may be in for some serious trouble here. Nevertheless, let round two begin. Seems like we're sticking with town and city. Morris is sticking with down with neutral aerial to upwards aerial. 
Along with the occasional tilt. Sora is having quite a bit of trouble getting close enough for an, for an attack without getting caught up in those aerials. That is just weird to watch. But, Morris is able to bait out Sora J for one final up air, depriving them of their first stop. Before continuing the cycle. They really like that up air. Upwards air. Okay. Well, that's certainly one way to deprive someone of a stock. But Sora J still has one more to cut through before this fight can even look close to even. It's pretty clear that despite Ike being a rather heavy, a rather heavyweight, the, the floaty nature of their aerial movement is give and Sora J quite a bit of pause. And what were they even trying there? They just kind of... I don't know. Round two goes to Morris. And we move on to round three. Seems like the stage has been changed this time to, po to Pokemon Stadium 2. Sora J remains in a bit of trouble, despite being much better on the reeds this time. Managing to keep Morris in disadvantage state for quite a while. Alas, they eventually make it back to the stage. Where Sora J ironically tries to bait out for the attack, but because of the wide-reaching nature of Ike's aerials, the baited attack still hits him anyway. And after that, Morris pulls the same stunt, being quite a bit more successful. Oh, okay, that should be it. 
For all Ike's pop for all Ike's raw combo power. They can either recover they can only recover in straight lines. No diagonals. Sword's Sword J still a bit behind though. Despite landing a quite a few good co combos here and there. And everywhere. Surprised Sora J didn't go for an up smash right there. And their attempt at edge guarding failed spectacularly. And their attempt at preventing edge guarding failed even worse. Deprive causing them to be thoroughly deprived of their second stop. They aren't giving up just yet though. Also greetings, TM7 underscore at Z A P. Welcome, welcome to Taipan GG's. How are you this fine evening? As Morris kind of walked right into a down smash. They're able to get in a down throw to forward air right there. But they don't get much of a lead as one quick forward air of Sora J is enough to take out their second stock. And I can't blame them at that percentage. Henrik and Inkling's back air could do that. One down and and as I finish that sentence, one down air to up air to up air later. Morris has successfully deprived Sora J of their final stock while retaining. Never mind. Thus they win round three, and the set. Congratulations, Morris. Looks like you will be moving on. To the Losers Finals. Where you will be going against a fellow by the name of Stefan. Seemingly a member of Apple Esports. And Sora J, apologies, but it looks like this is the end of the line for you. You fought valiantly, my friend. But alas... Yes, it is the nature of existence. Practice all you want. You'll... you'll always be... Never mind. You like my commentating? Hmm, Stefan must have been able to figure out the arena code on their own. Eh. Well, thank you, my friend. Means a lot. Actually, if you would like to see more of me, I do... I do... I try to do this at least once a day, usually for a crew battle or a tournament. I am... I am the Blood Tyrant. I doubt you've heard of me, but I'm trying to get out there. So yeah, if you want to see more of me, feel free to check out that link. <laughs> As we wait for Stefan to select their character. Select their character they have. All right, folks. Let round one begin. Three, two, one, go. So Stefan has selected St Steve as their character, or Enderman, if you will. But I digress. At the gate. 
Morris quickly and easily did takes them to 57.7% courtesy of Ike's aerial combos. And Stefan returns the favor. Courtesy of the minecart and Steve's own and Steve's own aerial combos. Alas, not to the same extent. Well... Uh, well, I guess it's going to be a two-stalker. Because that was a thing that exists. <laughs> Seems Stefan tried to use their own body to block, a, to block that side B, forcing Morris into the abyss. Alas, the side B no longer works like that. I saw their plan there. Alas, it did not work. And even allowed st even allowed Morse to get in a quick up smash. But there goes Stefan's second stock either way. And greetings, Dragon Beast MC. Welcome to Taipan GG's. How are you this fine evening? Down throw, upwards aerial, upwards aerial. Who's the guy who said neutral aerial? I'll have to look that up. Oof. Stefan successfully baits out an ether, allowing them to get in a forward smash. And while it forces more, and while, and while Morris is able to quickly recover th from the resulting disadvantage state, it ultimately is open to the double back, to one of the double back airs that Steve is known for. They are really trying their best to wall out Stefan right there. And but despite their best efforts, Stefan makes it back to the stage before getting thrown off thanks to another ether. Morris should probably still be a little, uh, never mind. Or not. They live. They're out of iron. Blah. Okay. Never mind. Do 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 do. And so, round one goes to Morris. Oh, that was Alpha Rad? Thanks. Anyway, what the frick, I just beat Morris's Ike in the second chance bracket. You didn't think they actually used it for non-random stuff? <laughs> Apparently not. I believe I've w I believe I've seen Morris in action before as well. Quite the skilled Ike they are. Also, Frost Drake, welcome back. How are you this fine evening? As I continue to succumb to brain death. And greetings, Cade Sav one zero zero five. Welcome, welcome to Taipan GGS. Oh, Morris is a Rob main. Hmm. Is this? Well, I believe I've primarily seen them playing as Ike, so perhaps the Ike thing is an online- is- perhaps Ike is their online main? Ouch, and there goes Stefan's second stock. I said online main. Oh well. That said... Morris has gotten quite a hefty lead. You guys could see my face right now. Well, a few seconds ago. Never mind. 
Oh. <laughs> Stefan gets in a lucky back air right there. Only to very nearly bite it to what? Bite it to Ike's up air? Uh, that looks weird. No sympathy for me. But, nevertheless, it gives round two to Morris. Also, it occurs to me as I was talking, Phyllis, as I was talk, as we were talking about this nonsense, I had saved a replay but neglected to play it. Let's take a look. Well, first there was that bit of nonsense. Oh, that's what happened. <sighs> Forgive me, I can... Forgive me, I tend to get distracted rather easily. Nevertheless, we now wait for round three to begin. And begin it shall. Stefan is playing it a little safer this time. But despite, but despite Morris being the first to lose a stock, they're able to return the favor to Stefan rather quickly, tying the score. Well, rather quickly. Stefan very clearly ain't taken too kindly to that, and they're able to land a few very solid blows. Well, that's a lot of their prod. The rest winds up undone thanks to one tilt to aerial by Morris. And I don't know why that did the dramatic zoom in. No one got hurt. But Stefan was able to get in a good forward smash right there. Okay, that time they just. Well, that time both of them got hurt. <laughs> Ow. Despite Stefan going for the hard mix-up right there, one quick backwards aerial deprives them of their second stock. However, Stefan is able, finally able to get off the get off the TNT they were looking for, taking out Morris's second stock, and quickly putting them a bit behind thanks to a sick, what I think was six hits with an X, followed by one up smash. Not enough for a kill for one as heavy as Ike, but still quite a bit of progress towards that kill. Seems like Morris made a bit of a miscalculation in, in trying to avoid that TNT. But they're still trying to go for that up air. Or a dash attack. That works too. Hmm. Quite. Well, that was quite the back air. And Morris returns the. 
favor with there. Of all the things to take you out, a mid-air minecart on redstone. And so the round the third round goes to Stefan. And we move on to round four. And I don't even think they punched in the ch the stage change. Three, two, one, go! Quite eager to keep going, I take it. Stefan is the first to get in a significant blow thanks to an eight-hit axe combo followed by a minecart, which ironically did less damage than the one ending in. Actually, that's not ironic. As Morris tries to go for the tr for the multi up air hit, they wind up very nearly saying goodbye to their first duck early on thanks to an anvil. But frankly, I'm surprised it didn't kill. That on the other hand, that certainly will kill. So goes Morris's first stock. Stefan try and as Morris tries to come out the gate, guns blazing. Stefan tries their best and very nearly fails to keep their distance until the invincibility frames wear off. Alas, despite their best efforts, they're only able to get in a good 14.7% before they or a dash attack sends them flying. Are able to get in a quick three hit aerial combo and another launching back air. And one final T blow with the TNT deprives Ste Morris of their second stock. I should be glad I didn't have to do the second chance bracket. Look at what the winner's final matchup is when the game's done. All right. Old oh, Spike, that's game. That is certainly game. Game. And so, round four goes to Stefan. And we move on to round five. What say you folks? Will Stefan... Okay, not even going to change the stage. Will Stefan be able to bring this back? Or will Morris, well, return the turned tables? As I, tr as I like to say. I'll think of something more clever someday. Especially now that final week is finally over. Well, out the gate here, I can't say not one or the other is looking particularly advantageous. And I'm surprised that didn't kill. That TNT... It bothers me that that TNT has less knockback than the anvil. And maybe it's just... Eh, never mind. So goes Stefan's first stock. So goes Morris's first stock. Alas, despite their efforts, that minecart remains as OP as ever. 
Stepping very nearly says goodbye to their second stock right there. Only barely hanging on to it. And getting their revenge with three hits whipping the axe, followed by an up smash. Uh-oh, will that be it? No, it won't. <laughs> they faked out with the TNT! <laughs> okay, that works. But Morris is able to get their revenge out the gate with a quick back air. However, Stefan does have the diamond gear out the gate. Well, they're able to get two up airs, not much else, thanks to Ether. Seems like Morris will be sticking with their with their fast falling aerials for now. Ah, <laughs> uh, well that. Wow, two kill screens, and so goes Stefan's final stock. No sympathy from me. And so, round five, and the set. Go to Morris. <sighs> GG, my friends. Congratulations, Morris. Looks like you will be moving on. And apologies, Stefan. Looks like it's the end of the line for you. But you certainly fought valiantly. Nevertheless... We move on. Once my... Computer's browser on freezes. <laughs> yes, folks, the time has come for the grand finals. Wait a minute. Why is Stefan still here? Uh, Stefan, if you are... Uh, Stefan, if your audio is active, I am afraid I must ask you to step out of the arena. No, not... No, not you, Morris. Ugh. Oh. Well, very well. But Stefan, I'm still going to have to ask you to please exit the arena.
Someone always has to pull that stunt. Always breaks single too. Okay. This is the grand finals. Let round one begin. what's wrong with my overlay in time for DTP Slushy to be spiked out of their first stock. I might also add that it would seem Morris has elected to switch to Rob. A bit of carelessness cost Morris their own first stock. Beware the Dong Cyclone. Seems like DT. Seems like Slushy is going for quite a few solid risks as they try to. And there goes Morse's second stock. Slushy successfully lands another full, fully charged Dong Punch. May not have been enough to kill, but then there goes their second stock. That's what I get for making jokes. Also, greetings, Mivix. Welcome. Welcome back to Taipan GG's. How are you this fine evening? I doubt you- I don't know if you remember me or not, but... I am the Blood Tire, returning to returning to bring you this ep- this epic tournament. Oh, oh. Slushy tries to read for one final Dong Cyclone, allowing- t with the resulting end lag being more than enough for Morse to go for a back air, depriving Slushy V2 of their final stock, and netting them the round. Can I tag? Ready? Well, I am, I am the Blood Tyrant. I'm quite the... <sighs> Hang on, my clipboard's broken. I am, I am the Blood Siren. I'm a commentator for these types of events, such as crew battles, sm Smash Bros tournaments, and the like. I'm also, I'm also trying to branch out into other games. Alas. I lack the necessary funding. So if you, 
So if you want to see more hype, so if you want to heap see more hype gaming content, just feel free to click on that link and follow. Lord knows I need all the help I can get, especially given my recent hardware issues. Also, there goes Morris's first stock. Oh, this rings a bell. <laughs> anyone wanna hey, anyone wanna see something funny? I once did that to someone. But it was two different characters. Eh, uh, never mind. Who are you asking who plays cause? Oh, thank you so much for the 100 bits, my friend. Oh, no. I main ink- My apologies, I main inkling. Splatoon- Truth be told, Splatoon was one of the first multiplayer games I played. Ouch. And so go And so goes Slushy's second stock. I am considering picking up a new main, however, given the fact it seems to be general consensus that Inkling has lost their luster, so to speak. <sighs> the primary reason I still made them now? Well, again, I'm an avid squid kid. And slushy. And Slushy successfully slap the slappers Morris into oblivion, giving them round two. A slapper. And we move on to round three. Anyway, Dragon Beast, I don't know if you saw or not, but I got, but I have my own channel. If you are interested in seeing more of me specifically, I don't know if you, I don't know if you've been there before or not, but eh. Okay. And just like that, TTV Slushy winds up losing their first stock in just about record time. Oh. Well, that's odd. <laughs> but, Slushy is able to quickly and easily return the favor. Wow, they both lost their first stock and we're not even a minute in. Usually it's about two minutes before that happens. You think you fought me in crew battles before? <laughs> Perhaps. I tend to stream quite a few of those. I was taking last. I was taking a week off due to fine due to it being finals week, but that's life. winds up very nearly take, taking out their own second stock right there. Uh-oh. What? Up throw? Why did they not do down throw? Well, I suppose it doesn't matter as they put poor Slushy in disadvantage and for allowing them to go for one final forward air, depriving Slushy of their second stock. I gotta say, Slushy has <laughs> been outspeed. Beware the speed.
This fight is... This particular fight is just all over the place. And there goes Morris's second stock. Down throw. Slapper into oblivion. And so, round three goes to Slushy V2. <laughs> if Slushy V2 can win the next round, they take the entire tournament. And greetings, Penguin underscore SSB. Welcome. Welcome to Taipan GG's. How are you this fine evening? Three, two, one, go! There goes, there goes Slushy's first stock. Sorry, you got a little distracted. As the fight continues. <laughs> Spread the DK agenda. Bro, sounds like if Siri was set to... What are you implying? And do you really not recognize me? Surely we... Surely this is not our first meeting, Penguin. Ouch. And so goes... Morris' first stock. That being said, Slushy's still quite a bit behind. They're going to have to play it safe from here on out. Otherwise... Slushy didn't go for the... Okay, that works too. Morris is able to successfully bait out... The do bite out the mighty bonnet. Okay. Oh, <laughs> oh my god! What just happened? What just happened? You can't... What just happened? Why are they both gone?
Okay. Accord. I'm I'm sorry, but I have to do this. A restart? I also thought the game- Well, no, they both had one stock remaining, but for some reason, they both disconnected? According- According to- According to chat on Smash GG, it looks like- According to Smash- According to- S what has been written on Smash GG. A resident of Morris's dwelling has somehow got had somehow been able to had somehow been able to modify the router in such a way that it's that it cut the connection to their switch. These modifications indirectly resulted in in slushy v2 winding up out uh, winding up booted from my arena as well also rm8 ssbu welcome to welcome back to taipan ggs how are you this fine evening also i must i must say long time no long time no see old friend as we try to as i att attempt to get in contact with my with my administrator. Suppose as we attempt to sort this out, I will leave the I will leave the instant replay I was able to successfully collect on. If only so I can figure out how their shield broke. Explains it. What you just saw, you've literally never seen in your entire 15k plus Wi-Fi games. You are 99% in day book. 99% I am a I am a being of brain farts. You are 99% certain they both de disconnected at the same time.
There we go. Sorry about that. Sorry about that, just a bit of tech difficulty. <laughs> someone remind- someone remind me to- Someone remind, remind me to reboot the stupid thing later. I may have gotten DC'd first. Okay, but... Okay, but even if that's the case, how would... I don't know. Ask me what? Yeah, I have the replay right- I was able to save the replay right here. Having a- <sighs> Maybe I did disconnect, maybe I didn't. But it wouldn't- But- if that what but if that was the case, how did they both wind up kicked out of the arena? My mic is working, right? This thing didn't turn itself off again, did it? I mean, if both parties would be okay with it, I suppose we could just reset the stocks. <laughs> well, if I was the result of the disconnect, wouldn't the entire arena have just been shut down? Now for the love of-
Ugh, these... this is... I don't know what this is. Why did it have to happen now? 